Hey Forum Friends, it's uh, Ditch2220 and I uh, just felt like making a little video here to describe the process that I use for tearing out perforated cards from a sheet. Uh, in this case I'm using the 1990 Little Big Leaguer sheet. Um, a couple of uh, stars on the sheet here, namely Nolan Ryan, Ozzy Smith, Tony Fernandez, Tony Gwynn. Um, so I'm just going to kind of walk you through the process and how after messing up on a couple of cards I figured out what I felt like was the best way of doing this and uh, hopefully it'll help some of you there. So what I start by doing is taking off the uh, the bordered edges here and you can see that the perforation doesn't actually extend all the way to the edge of the card so what I'll do is um, I'll take my uh, pocket knife here and I'll place a small score in the paper and pull it that score right up to the edge of where the, perfor the first perforation starts to get it set and uh, do the same thing on the bottom end here You only have to do this on two sides because then at that point you don't have another edge to contend with. This helps you prevent from tearing the, uh, the edge piece. So what I do is um, I have the edge of the counter here and I use that as kind of a, a piece to you know, keep the, the thing sturdy and to bend it over the edge. So what I really have found one of the biggest keys to doing this is once you have folded the paper in one direction do not fold the paper back in the other direction because this will start to develop a crease on the edge of the card near the perforation so you know I use that to kind of start it and then I can pick the paper up and just put a little more pressure and make sure that it has a good clean bend once I feel comfortable with the amount of bend that I have put on it here close to 45 seems to be where I like to, to do that. Then you just hold you know, one hand to keep the paper steady on the, the edge and move your thumb carefully down the edge here and, and tear it off. Um, this actually works really well uh, most of the time. I've only had a couple of cards where I you know, pulled off maybe a little more than I had planned on a corner or something like that. But I don't think there's any way to totally protect yourself from that. You just have to be smart about the way you're doing it. So uh, that's one side off, and you can take a look and see that it's pretty clean, just about what you'd expect or what you'd want for something you're going to grade. Um, so I'm going to take this and do the same thing down the other side, where I will take the my unfortunately somewhat dull pocket knife and uh, and make a careful incision that comes right up to the edge of the perforations on both sides. And uh, be careful that you don't bend the cardstock while you're doing this. Also, pay close attention to the corners because, in some cases, the perforation on the corner kind of stops. I don't know if you can see that, uh, where it doesn't quite reach to the end. So you might have to ensure you don't make a big tear there. That was something I didn't pay attention to on some of the earlier ones too. So, just doing the same thing again here, using the edge of the counter to help me fold the, the paper right along the line. Uh, again, not doing it back and forth, but just in one direction. Pushing a little past 45, but then the card kind of just bounces right back to about 45. And then same thing. Thumb, using pressure on the counter to hold the, the card stuck in place, and then moving my thumb down the, the edge until I get to the, to the end. You'll notice that on the very bottom of this one is a really small strip, and so Makes it a little tougher to get a clean tear, but it still could be done. Same method, just I feel like I need to be more careful with those. Mainly when I'm trying to bend it like this, that I am only bending this throwaway piece and not the actual cardstock. So and so what becomes harder is uh obviously getting a hold of it, especially if you got huge fingers like me. But I got it started, so the only deal is, you know, if you got big fingers, it's harder to get a hold of this little guy. So, oh, and then there I broke the continuous rip, so I'm gonna have to kind of do a restart of the tear. Shouldn't be too too hard. Yeah, and what you get is sometimes, if you can see that there, like on the edge of Ozzy Smith, some little extra stuff you can use. Um, like a little pair of uh, 
tweezers or something like that is what I would recommend to get in and pull some of those things off to make them look as, uh, as best as possible. So now moving on to the tiny, tiny, teeny little edge down here at the bottom. And, uh, you know, once again, I'm just going to bring it to the edge, kind of close and tight, pull on it. Some of these are so close that you literally can't rip them, so uh, I don't have a strategy for that yet. My strategy is buy another copy for that at this point. Maybe tweezers if you think you can um, withstand that length of uh, an annoying process. I only had one page out of this book, um, which is I think about five or six pages, which had that problem. And uh, I elected, because they were not any major stars, to just forget about them, to be honest with you. So this will be, you know, just again a challenge in getting it started and, and keeping the continuous rip because of how tiny it is. Um, as you can see, I've already done it twice and I ripped it without being able to do it continuously. And you might have to go along the whole way like that. Yeah, it just doesn't look as pretty when you do that, so try to avoid that if you can. But looks like I'm unable to do that on no one here. Try to check your hands every once in a while too. If you're a big guy like me and you get sweaty from time to time, if you leave your hand uh, on it for a while, you can get some sweat start to develop there and you don't want to ruin the finish on the card. So, Okay, so now that I've got the edges all uh, pulled off, I'm essentially what I'm going to do to break down the cards is kind of take the whole sheet, start to bend it, and uh, I'll be able to bend it right on the perforated line, the key again. I don't ever let it bend back in the other direction to prevent that kind of uh, you know, creasing from occurring. And uh, you'll see once you have it here uh, that you're uh, you know, roughly 45, maybe a little bit more. What I do is simply line this up as close as I can with the edge of the counter and then pull downward. And it takes some time a good amount of force to get it to go, but once it goes, the whole thing just kind of comes off in one fell swoop, nice and clean. And then you'll repeat that as you go through the individual cards in the triptych here. Get them to 45 approximately, place them on the edge. Nice amount of pressure, and it pops off. So unfortunately, you can see Nolan kind of OC to the right there, but, um, you know, if he weren't OC, it would be a decent card to submit, probably based on the tear. At least I'd feel confident for the most part with the tear. The cards that are in the center will be better, uh, or ones that don't have that tiny edge. So if you got a bottom card in some of these cases, you might struggle with getting it perfect. But I don't think you have to be too perfect. So, so there you have it. Um, that is pretty much my process for ripping these. Uh, hopefully that'll help some of you guys there and save you a little time and a little tearing. Enjoy.